Good morning, friends. So welcome again to the Trade Speakeasy. You can find us at tradespeakeasy.learnworlds.com. And this might be actually where you are finding this video. Um, so last week, we also talked about the issue of how to look at the VIX in relationship to like how much volatility is in the market and how your equity positions might be interacting and trying to look at the put call ratios to see how constructive a quote unquote reversal is and how much positive strength is behind that so that you don't get faked out by these like volume pumps or bear flags or bear rallies. So one of the symbols that I showed you guys was the VIX 3M over the VIX. And this basically looks at the VIX three months from now, um, opposed to the volatility that is in this front month. And when that is, when the number is really, is really low, it means that essentially the front the front month has a lot more volatility than the next three months, which demonstrates that the market believes that at this particular moment, there's something going on in the market that is creating a lot of volatility, which might not necessarily be present in the next three months. And so that volatility is increasing in the like right in front of us more so than it's increasing at an incremental rate towards the back months. So, I mean, just normal rationalization, um, you know, if I have three months of anything, it should be more than the what I have in one month. But if one month is, is worth more than the three months, it shows that there's something really significant happening um, in those front months or that front time period. So, we did see this VIX three month over the VIX one month drop way low down to this 0.95, which is very, very, very low. It is like almost back to like the COVID level. Okay. COVID was all the way down to the 0.8, which was an extreme amount of um, extreme amount of volatility. We didn't get that low. And thankfully, we have been in incrementally moving up towards that 1.2. But really, what we want to see for really kind of that consistent bullish move upwards and kind of a volatility support for an upward trajectory, we really want that number to be really if we can get even above 1.2, that is really where we have previously seen in the market that kind of easy move um, upwards. So just like stair stepping towards the top. When we really push below one, we're seeing those kind of fast, aggressive drops. And it is normal to see to see those that ratio get around somewhere between 1.05 and 1 when we have operations expiration because options expiration because that really is a time where there's a bit more volatility in the market because of the move in the in the different contracts and of course at quad witching but it is abnormal that we would have seen you know such such a low ratio at you know during this last week so we did get all the way up. We were trying to get above that 1.15 and we weren't able to sustain it. Now we're back down to this 1.09, which is neutral to bearish, let's say. So for those who are looking to position themselves long, okay, this, I mean, you know, if you're thinking of like long buy and holds, then, you know, that's not a problem. You might consider this a good time to get in. But for those who are looking to buy long options like leaps, this might not be the best time to get in only because you will always be losing VEDA and, and theta against your leap. And if you are just in a single long position without any short covering to hedge some of that decay, you might see for the next two or three weeks just this, you know, irrational kind of up and down movement and be, you know, see your leaps lose value for the first two or three weeks unnecessarily. So, you know, I don't like to get into leaps when the market is just whiplashing because 
it can cause your account just to go up and down and just to lose that theta decay on a daily basis for no reason. But of course, I never position myself in single leaps. I always enter my leaps in a diagonal. But for those who don't yet know how to position themselves in diagonals, um, I would I would suggest that you um, consider that because it just takes some of the edge off of that delta and beta decay from like the inception of your leap while it's like, especially in volatile markets like this. So the other thing you can look at is the put call ratio. And this is just a composite. And when the number is high, then you have, then the, the puts are just, yeah, you have more puts than calls. And essentially that is again, you know, making the market heavy for your long positions. Now, for those who are structuring themselves in, in, in spreads or diagonals or calendars, then you can just use this information to position yourself for a more neutral to bearish um, direction over the coming weeks. Or even for those who are in iron condors or doing things that where they're selling both in the out the money call and put situation or dynamic, or even if you're in double diagonals or double calendars. Um, so however you're positioning yourself, whatever strategy you are utilizing, if you are hoping to have a even bullish trajectory, again, you we really need to see this put call ratio drop below 0.6. So as you can see here, I do have the Fibonacci on. This is not because the Fibonacci um, extension is helpful for this. It's only so that we can have some honest lines so we can kind of compare where the ratio is at its best. And essentially when we are in this red area, that's when we're seeing this like positive incremental move to the bullish side in the markets generally. So this kind of gives us an overview of what's happening. So you might have like what, like a sector, like, okay, energy is doing really well, but the overall market is still heavy. That's what this is. This is kind of the information that it's giving us. We want to see numbers really between 0.6 and 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is amazing. That's when we really see this consistent week on week bullish trajectory. So now if we go back, um, we can also look at the PCCE, which is just the put call ratio on equities um, and specifically looking at those in the CBOE. So it's, it's very similar to the PC. And again, you want, you know, when you have lower numbers, the lower the number, the, the more call, calls you have, which is tends to be directionally more bullish. So right now we are still just at that kind of bearish um, point. So we are really at like really at a neutral position. We will need to see again, that number really get above 0.6 to be able to give us some better a better feeling of the strength in any of those bullish moves so that we're not getting whipped out or positioning ourselves maybe um, too aggressively on the put side. And maybe if, you know, if we are in short call positions and price looks like it's approaching us, we don't have to feel as nervous because there is a tendency now towards neutral to bearish action. So if you are in maybe an iron condor and you see price coming up towards your call credit spread, you don't need to feel as, as um, nervous as if you like are too aggressive on the put side. So that hopefully just helps to give you kind of an overview. These are things that you can check yourself. These are the, the tickers on trading view. If you and we will continue to visit this, revisit these ideas. So if you're interested and you want to get the videos and yeah, hit the like on the YouTube channel or subscribe to our updates on the trade speakeasy.learnworlds.com. All right. Bye for now, friends.